Hey, welcome. Welcome to Gold Creek Community Church on Mother's Day. It's awesome. And we have this really cool thing happening. What's happening? Oh, my goodness. This is going to be such a fun day. Happy yeah, Mother's Day to all of the awesome. moms out there. But we are swapping places. Right. Our family pastor is taking over the main. We got all really great women singers. I get to throw a party singers. for everybody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have a little Hawaiian theme going yes, on outside, yes. right? There's there's sausage and all kinds of food. Coconut macaroons. Chocolates. Is there anything like that? Or well, nothing? there might be a little chocolate. No. No. Actually, no. Why didn't it. you do chocolate? <laughs> what in the world's going on? But here, here's the thing, Stacey. I was, um, I'm sitting there. In, in the kids' room, and that I've left someone else in charge right now, which is a little <laughs> scary because uh, the kids are coming right now. But <laughs> I am de totally dependent on Dad yes. showing up to help me. Yes. And it is so nerve-wracking for me. I've never been so nervous, not not about my part, right. but about the dad's part. Welcome so, to our kids' world. Yeah. So what are you <laughs> nervous about today? So. Oh, I am nervously excited about being able to speak to not just moms, but all parents and, and really all people of influence over the next generation right. and representing Jesus to them. Well, and I have to tell you, I'm excited. This is Barefoot Sunday for me, but I get to talk to kids about their relationship with God. And I, you know what? It just, uh, this is where most people make their decisions. Mm -hmm. And I don't get a chance very often to do that, but I'm so excited to just challenge kids to really step up and follow God. And man, I, it's such a cool honor. It's an honor to be with the kids today. I have to tell you that. It's that is amazing. I yeah. so appreciate your heart. It's so yeah. genuine with that. But yes, I, I've been praying for the kids this morning as well. <laughs> yeah, it is a little nerve wracking. <laughs> we have lots of cooks. It's so funny to me. We have hundreds of men out there ready to cook and all that. And I have like four guy volunteers. I'm taking some cooks. Yeah, if, I if think the, you're going to need to. It's going to have yes. to happen. So uh, we're making paw prints and giving them away. But here, here's one thing I want to remind you. Next week, we have a really cool, um, really cool opportunity to share the vision for the church. And I, I ask you ahead of time to just make room in your schedule, even if you're not here in person, make room to watch the service mm -hmm. because I want to share where we're headed in this next year. It's kind of as close to Membership Sunday as we yeah. have, right? And, yeah. and for those that come here, this is one of those times we, we, we give away kind of like a membership shirt. It's kind of cool. We have a cool mm -hmm. one planned this year. And, and we just talk about where we're going as a church. And I really invite you to, uh, to make that a priority and to join us in that way. I know you'll do that. Absolutely. And yeah. and you talk about where we've been and where yeah, yeah where we're heading. I love it. It is a great message, yeah. so don't miss it. I know right now we have got a bunch of beautiful ladies ready to represent awesome. worship yeah. and, and Mike the drummer. Yes, that's right. <laughs> so let's have a great worship service. Join us. It's Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. All right, let's switch. And for worship.
tall and he has a long stride. And when I was little, we would be out and about and I would be struggling to keep up with him. And there's a question he would always ask me. He would say, do you want to lift? And I remember I was always so grateful he'd swoop me up and suddenly it's like my vantage point changed. I was no longer looking at everybody's knees. I could see what he was seeing and I wasn't struggling. We're getting ready to sing a song called God With Us. And the song is just all about God's presence with us. But my favorite part is the bridge. And it says, where there was death, you brought life. Where there was fear, you brought courage. When I was afraid, you were with me. And then it says, and you're lifting me up. You're lifting me up. And I don't know what you're going through today, but I just pray as we sing these words, you'll just let them wash over you. And you'll just let your Heavenly Father pick you up and give you a lift today. Sing this with us. You are matchless in grace and mercy. There is nowhere we can hide from your love. You are steadfast, never failing. You are faithful. All creation is in awe of who you are. You're the healer of the sea in the broken you are comfort for every heart that mourns our king our savior forever for eternity we will sing of all you've done for eternity we will sing of all you've done to me. 
There is nothing worth more that could ever come close. No thing can compare your our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen. There is nothing worth more that could ever come close. Nothing can compare your our living home. Your presence, Lord. And I taste it. It's your presence, Lord. We love your presence. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your
us to be a blessing to you and to each other. We just are so grateful. Bless this day, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Tanya, and all of the ladies' worship team today. You can be seated. Hi, I'm uh, Joy McBride. I am a, a director here at Kids at the Creek Preschool and Kindergarten that happens all during the week. And uh, I'm here to talk to you about the offering. And so right now, I'll go ahead and have the ushers uh, start walking through. If you, uh, if you have an offering you wanna give, just go ahead and signal an usher and they'll come on over to you. I know most people give online, but um, some of you like to drop it in the bucket and that's good too. So, um, so you can see, I brought my my secret weapon here. <laughs> um, it's for a reason. He's here for a reason. This is my uh, grandson, Cade, one of two that I have. And uh, he's six months and a lot of fun. Um, but like I say, I brought him for a special reason today. Um, <clears throat> hopefully this goes well and he doesn't barf on me or any of those crazy things that little babies can do, right? So uh, anyhow, uh, as ushers go through, I wanted to talk to you and just tell you about, um, I got to thinking about uh, when I was a child, and my parents took us to church, and uh, even on days that, I thought he might try to get at the microphone, uh, anyhow, even on days when uh, all of us would be fighting in the car all the way, <laughs> all the way, we'll try this position, um, fighting in the car all the way to church, uh, my parents would still take us, and so uh, I want to give a shout out to my dad, who's watching online, thank you dad, and uh, my mom. Uh, who continued to take us to church. And because uh, there was a church that we could go to, people before us, people that didn't even know us had um, contributed. And they um, established the church. They contributed offerings and tithes and made it so that we had a place where we could go to Sunday school, my parents could go to adult service. We got to know about Jesus. I'm grateful for that. Um, then I was thinking about uh, my kids and how when, um, when they were growing up, we took them to church, and people before us that didn't even know us had contributed to establish the church. They um, brought tithes and offerings to make it so that we had Sunday school, we had adult services, we had all kinds of events, and my kids had a chance to know Jesus, and I'm grateful for that. So church doesn't get government stimulus checks, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, there isn't a, a trust fund that, that supports the church. It's offerings and ties, and it's from you, it's from me, it's, it's us. We're the ones that make the church run. So I, I just say, take a look at this little guy here, um, and I would encourage you, would you invest, um, consider investing in this next generation so that we can still have churches, so that kids can come to Sunday school, so adults can go to services online, in person, um, drive in, any way you want to do it. But keeping the churches open so that we ha all have an opportunity to learn about Jesus. I think right now our world needs Jesus even more now than, than ever before. So, um, yes, amen, right? <laughs> I think that's the only way we're going to get out of this mess that we're in. Um, so anyhow, I would just encourage you to invest in this next generation. So hence my secret weapon. <laughs> Who can resist a baby? So I'd like to pray for the offering, if you would join me, please. Lord God, thank you so much for being who you are, for being our God, for providing for all of our needs. I pray, God, that you would um, bless this offering, that we would use it um, to accomplish your will. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Hello, we're so glad you're here with us today on Mother's Day. I am Pastor Sarah, I'm the little kids pastor. And I'm Nadia, I'm the worship pastor and extended hands coordinator. Normally we're in kids. Today yeah. we get to be in adult service. Yeah, and if you got a little nervous dropping your own kids off, seeing all the men, don't worry. Two of them are, are, are with are us, two of them are, are dads, and they've had a little bit of experience they, with the kids. Yes, they have children. So your kids are in good hands, is what we're trying to say. Yes, so. and so, we, we have like amazing resources that I want to tell you about, and I'm actually excited to get to share this. So maybe you've never noticed this before, but when your kids leave, they leave with what we call a car card. So on this, it gives you a brief description of what they learned for the day. We know that oftentimes when you pick your kids up and you say, what'd you learn today? It's I don't know, or I don't know. I played. I or, played with some toys. There was a game. Yeah. yeah. So, we want to um, just give you this resource so that you feel equipped and you know questions you can ask your kids and you can connect with them about what they're learning about Jesus. So, and speaking of resources, like I said, I'm the Extended Hands Coordinator, so I help students with disabilities and get into the kids' programs, and I would love to meet you, you or new families here. I'll be out at the welcome table, so come out and say hi. And yes. If you're new today, we want to know, in fact, if you're new online, in person, in your car, um, please text welcome to the number you see right now on your screen. We want to know that you're here with us today. And let's, we're, in honor of our dads volunteering, we'll end it with a little dad joke. So <laughs> how do you uh, find Will, Will Smith in a snowstorm? How? Look for the fresh prints. <laughs> That's good. All right, you guys. Thanks for joining us. I really ask you to make it a priority to come. You can come Either way, you can come either by watching online or in person, but make it a priority next week to be at service. And here's why. We're starting a God Can series. We're, we're talking about what God can do, and we're, we're actually taking the scripture from our daily reading in our one-year Bible. So you're going to read out of John, and we're going to talk about the boy and his lunch and the 5,000. But really what I want to talk about is I want to talk about the vision of where we're going as a church. I have some really, really cool things that I think God's doing and he's asking us to do. And I want you to be a part of that. I really want you to do that. It's, it's as close to membership as what we have. And if you're a member, if you call Go Creek Home, you need to make time to watch this service or to be in person in this service. So I'm asking you, join us next week. It's going to be a great Sunday. I cannot believe you. Chill, sis. I'm like two minutes late. Are ready for this? Now or never. Let's do it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a robbery. We have hardly anything in our accounts. My ex is suing me for custody. You should probably give a lawyer. I can't afford to fight it. I better get a manager up here right now! <sighs> My daughter needs this treatment. The drug you're talking about is 10 grand a month out of pocket. My husband and I work all the time. Good morning and happy Mother's Day. I am so excited to be in here today. I was, when Pastor Dan suggested that we were going to swap places, I thought, this is absolutely perfect. I have been wanting to invite all of you to one of my parties that I love to throw, but my house isn't quite big enough. So I thought, this is my opportunity. So thank you all for coming, and for those of you watching online as well. Some of you might be eating breakfast in bed right now, and I hope you're enjoying that. And for those of you in the drive-in as well, happy Mother's Day to all of you moms all of you women of influence, and I really want to give a shout out to the single dads out there as well. Some of you can be horrible moms, and that's okay. You're not meant to be a mom, but you're a fantastic dad, so I just want to give you a shout out. Speaking of kids, I don't typically ask you to sign a waiver for Sunday morning kids services, but if you wouldn't mind for just today, that would be fabulous. You can just get one of those later. I, I'm kidding, though. I'm sure that it's going completely fine. In fact, let's go ahead and check it out. Let's see how it's going over there in kids. Mother's Day, it has been such a blessing to be so happy. Mother's Day, it has been such a blessing to be in little kids today, to be able to help out just a little bit with these wonderful kids. Um, the, your kids are wonderful. Hey, hey, you guys, come back here. Hey, Stacy. Hey, I'm up here in the bridge. We are having so much fun. Everything's totally in control here. We're having great. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, please. 
what we're doing, but we're not, nothing to see. Nothing to see here. Hey, I just want you to know we've completely lost control, but I'm sure you're going to have a great Mother's Day. I hope you have a great time. Nothing to worry about. It's going totally fine. In all honesty, though, Pastor Dan's heart is so genuine. I assure you those are not real numbers, so don't, you don't need to pull them out yet. The real ones will just pop up in the corner. <laughs> every morning, every Sunday morning, he walks through all of the kids' areas because he really does care about your children. He asks all of the children's pastors and the youth pastors what their message is going to be, and he loves nothing more than to hear about when kids have made decisions for Christ, whether it's on a Sunday morning or at a camp. Those of you might have seen the, the beginning part of the message today, and he just tears up talking about your kids, and this is the time that they make their faith their own, and it really does make my job so rewarding that he makes it such a priority. For some of you, I may have not met, you might wonder, well, what is your job and who are you? So let me tell you a little bit about who I am. My name is Stacy Philpot, and I am the family pastor here. I've, this is my fifth year of being the family pastor. Before that, so I've been here, my family and I, for 14 years. We, I was the kids pastor, and before that, I was a children's pastor at Yakima Foursquare. And Gold Creek has been such a home and a blessing to my family. And speaking of my family, here they are. I have a beautiful blended family. I brought three of those wonderful kids into the family, and my husband brought our oldest son. And the handsome young man at the end, he was crazy enough to join our family by marrying our daughter. And I'm going to cry for just a second because she gave me permission to tell you that I'm going to be a grandmother in December. <laughs> We could not be more excited, and some of you might actually recognize her. That is Pastor Haley. She is the high school pastor here. And for any of you that know her, it is so not, it is not a coincidence that her due date is December 25th. I said, leave it to you to have it on the same day as Jesus. I mean, it is so perfect. They make me cry. My family makes me cry in joy, in, in angst in fear, in prayers, and your kids make me cry in, G in joy, sometimes in fear at camp as well. Something else that makes me cry is your vote for what you wanted me to preach on. You had so many great choices. You had Away, which was the courageous woman that went to Mars, Firefly Lane, the two best friends uh, based out of Snohomish. It was so cute. Fuller House, who doesn't love some DJ Tanner and Uncle Jesse? The door is always open. That would be an easy, easy message. But no, you voted for good girls, AKA bad girls. And for those of you that have not watched that filth before it was, okay, I actually had already watched the series before you had even voted on it, so I will confess to that. But let me tell you a little bit about what it is. You saw just a little glimpse, but it's three moms, three suburban moms, that are all facing a different hardship in their family. And they're trying to make ends meet. They keep just having a hard time. Nothing's working for them. So they end up getting into a life of crime. They end up robbing a grocery store. They end up laundering money. And eventually, they end up making counterfeit money and just working with the wrong people. They were good people with good intentions that made really poor choices. I'm sure none of us here can relate with that. And it's not just us that have been guilty of going to extremes, good or bad, for our families and in our life. We're going to look just for a minute at some of the mothers of faith that came before us that went to extremes, that made some good choices and some not so great choices. Eve, for example, the very first mother, it is thanks to her that we have pain in childbirth, and really all because she cheated on her diet. God said, do not eat from this one tree. That's all I'm telling you. Don't eat those Oreos. Don't eat that ice cream. But we get so tempted. 
She was tempted by the idea of having worldly knowledge, and Satan deceived her into that. We go into Sarah, who God had promised her, you are going to be a mother, but she was impatient. She did not trust in God's timing. Again, I'm sure none of us can relate with that. And she convinced her husband to sleep with the maidservant and then resented him for doing so. I, I had a little conviction with that, like, oh, I think I've been guilty of talking my husband into something and then being mad at how it turned out. And he's looking at me like, you asked us to do this. Jochebed was Moses' mom, and she knew that his death would happen if she did not do something and take matters into her own, her own hands. So she sacrificed and trusted and put Moses into a basket to go down the river, hoping and praying that an Egyptian woman would adopt him. And turns out it was Pharaoh's daughter, who then needed a nurse's maid to take care of him. So she was actually able to still take care of her son while he was raised in a safe place. Naomi was a loving mother-in-law to Ruth and convinced her to go sleep at Boaz's feet, which then turned into them getting married and taking care of both Naomi and Ruth. And if you know the story, Boaz and Ruth then were in the same line of Jesus. After that, we've got Mary, the, the most boldest and strongest woman of faith that we can all think of. When she so boldly and nervously accepted the task to bring in the Son of God. And as we can all imagine, we've joked about before, she had to convince everybody that that is what was happening. She had to convince her fiancé. Think of the matter of faith that she had to stand for, that she had to be so confident in to do that. We all go to extremes in different ways. Last week, Pastor Dan talked about the documentary of the social dilemma and social media and, and where we are with that, the goods and the bad. One of the other options that you could have voted on was the college admission scandal that we've recently heard in the news in this last year. Just another example of parents going to extremes because they wanted the best for their children. Their intentions weren't horrible, but because of their actions, there were consequences for them and their children. I can so relate to reacting in good ways and in bad ways. And it's hard at times with my job as a family pastor. And I have, I'm again so grateful for Gold Creek and just to be a part of this body of Christ, but to have such great leaders in my life. I have gone to Pastor Dan and his wife Audrey before in tears saying, I am not fit to be the family pastor when I, my family is falling apart. And I'm not going to go into all of those hardships that we face. That's a whole other sermon, a whole other Sunday. But there have been some hardships. And he is so faithful and, and graceful to say, we've all been there, and why would I be any different? Why would God not put these same challenges in my life to build my faith? So what do we do? What is the biggest extreme? What is the best thing that we can do? Recently, Pastor Dan might have even mentioned it as well, but John Maxwell, who is an incredibly influential leader for businesses and churches, he's turning 75 this year, and he was being interviewed, and they asked him, what do you think about everything that's going on in the world right now, all of the darkness and all of the division? And he said, rather than curse the darkness... We need to turn on the light. The best thing, the greatest extreme that we can do for our families, for our friends, for those around us, is be the salt and the light to them. In Matthew, Matthew 5.13 says, You are the salt of the earth, but what good is salt if it has lost its flavor? Can you make it salty again? It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. I make chocolate chip cookies all the time, and just the other night I made a batch of cookies. And I, as I'm mixing them, 
And I'm thinking, oh no, did I put in salt? Just even though it's a dash, if you don't put in the salt, the entire batch is tasteless and worthless. And I swear, I can be making a batch of cookies in my kitchen, my husband can be out in the yard, garage, upstairs, doesn't matter, and he comes running. He somehow knows just because he loves the dough. And so then he takes a big old spoon of the dough, and I said, okay, how is it? He's like, oh, it's so good. I thought, okay, there's salt. There's salt in there. That's good. It continues on to say, you are the light of the world. Like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden, no one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. If we have no flavor, we have no value. If we as a church, as a body of Christ, as Christians, do little or to no effort to make an effect on this world in a positive way, we have no value. That is exactly what he has called us to do, to be the positive example, that we don't get caught up and the darkness, and the drama, and the, the division that is happening, we should be the example of light, and unity, and goodness. We need to have an, a positive effect on this world. Re here, in this area, and those of you watching online, and maybe another city might be able to think of a place, but if you're down in the valley on Highway 9, and you're heading up the, the hill, off to the right, we all recognize the lights of Glacier Peak Field. There's no big sign, but we know what those lights are. We recognize it. Do others recognize Christ in you when they see you? Do they know that you are a Christian, or are they going to be shocked? For years, when my daughter was in middle school and high school, I led a, a small group of girls, and they came from different cliques, which was great because... They kind of, they came together for that one purpose, that they were all Christians. And I would often remind them, you know, I don't expect all of you girls to be best friends, but I expect you to be kind to one another and to have each other's backs. And others should know that you are a Christian without you telling them. They should not be shocked. They should not be surprised and call you fake. We are so often, as Christians, accused of being fake and hypocritical. And as we're thinking about the Good Girls show, at one point, they are making counterfeit money. And I thought, oh, that's so interesting. And so I looked up the meaning of counterfeit, which means to make something in the exact imitation of something valuable and important with the intent to deceive or defraud. And I thought, God makes us in his image, to be something valuable and important to this world and to others. Yet Satan comes to deceive and accuse us of so many other things. I recently heard a joke that said God gave us teenagers so that we would understand what it's like to create someone in our own image that denies our existence and refuses our advice. I was like, that, there is some truth to that. And I know that there's some of you, and I've been in this place so many times in my life, that you're thinking, that's all good and great, Stacy. Be the salt, be the light. Yes, I want my kids to hear that. I want them to know that. But my time to shine has passed. You are listening to the accusations that Satan has been replaying in your head over and over again. You're saying, you don't get it. I'm a liar. I'm a cheat. I'm a drunk. I'm lazy. I'm a fraud. I am insignificant. I cannot make a difference. I'm fat. I'm ugly. God cannot do anything with me. The worst accusations, though, are the ones that are attached to our sin. And I am not dismissing sin, not even for a second, because it grieves God so greatly. But rather than, rather than just holding on to those accusations, Fight them with scripture and repentance and do better. In Colossians, it says, you were, Colossians 2.13 says, you were dead because of your sins 
and because of your sinful nature, was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive with Christ, for he forgave all our sins. He canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. In this way, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. He has already been victorious. He's already done the work. When you are praying, Lord, please, I just pray that you would overcome, that you would take care of this sin. He's already done the work. Now it's your turn. He left us with the gift of the Holy Spirit. And kids, it's kind of easy to talk about because I talk to them about that feeling that they get in their stomach. I'm like, you know when you get that feeling when you mess up because you know the difference between right and wrong? You know when you've lied, you've hurt somebody's feelings, or you've just done something you weren't supposed to do? That is a good feeling. That is the gift of the Holy Spirit, and that is conviction, not condemning. And here's what the difference is. Here's what it sounds like. Conviction is I need to and can change that behavior and do better. Condemnation says I'm a failure. I'm never going to change. We need to stop identifying with the accusations in our mind. And if they are attached to sin, then talk to God about it and repent. You need to start claiming your identity from your advocate, which is Jesus Christ. All of us, whether you're in this room, whether you're watching online from home, whether you're in the drive-in, we all know what our faults are. We all know exactly where we need to do better, where we need to straighten up and talk to God. So do it. Talk to God about that and do better. We see a perfect example of this in John 8, where... Jesus is preaching to a group of, a a big crowd, and this group of men, they're trying to trick Jesus with so many different things at this time, and they bring this woman who has a horrible reputation. She is adulterous, she's been sleeping with many men, and they're dragging her, and they throw her at Jesus, and they say, okay, here she is, Jesus, you know what she's been doing, you know who she is, you know how bad she's messed up. The law of Moses says that we should stone her. What do you say we should do? Really, again, trying to trick him. So Jesus just stops, and the woman is beside him, and I imagine she's groveling and completely ashamed because she has been so condemned by them. And Jesus bends down, and he writes in the sand, and then he stands up, and he says, okay, okay. But the one of you... The first one to throw a stone is going to be the one of you that has never sinned. And so slowly, they all started to walk away. And Jesus had bent down again. After they were all gone, he stood up and he looked at the woman. And he said, where are your accusers? Didn't even one of them condemn you? No, Lord, she said. And Jesus said, neither do I. Go and sin no more. We are so good at condemning one another. We are so good at judging one another and pointing out each other's flaws when we know better and we can do better. Again, we already, we know our flaws more than anybody else. And when people remind us, it's like, I already know that about me. I know I need to do better. And we need to start listening to our advocate, Jesus Christ, who does not say those lies. He says, I am a story of grace. I am an example of mercy. I am an overcomer of sin. And I am someone who Jesus loves. As we wrap up this streaming series, we've looked at so many different things. We've looked at movies that have a start and a finish to them. We've looked at uh, the documentary, again, that can go on as a series. And I don't know about you, but I've been very guilty of watching a series and it continues to, there's that little box that says, you know, the next episode starting in 20 seconds. And you're like, well, I might as well just keep finishing it. So you can binge a whole season because we get so excited about what is coming next. And then when you've watched a whole season, you can't wait for the next season to come out. And I thought, how do we look at God's story and how do we see ourselves 
in that? How do we recognize that we are a part of it, that the Bible is not a start to finish, that God's story is continuing on, that the mothers of faith that we just talked about, we are also mothers of faith that someday somebody will be talking about. We are the next best season in God's story. Your children are God's next best season in God's story. And I am so excited to represent him, even in my mistakes and what I will learn from them. And I'm excited for my kids to represent him, even in all of their mistakes, because I know that they're going to do an even better job that I have. And isn't that what we want? We want our kids to do an even better job than us. At this time, I, I want to ask all of the moms to stand up and any women of influence, which if you don't know, that's all of you. All of you women, all of you moms, please stand up. You are amazing and beautiful and I am excited to hear more about your stories and your season that you're in. I'm gonna, I wanna pray for you, but then I'm gonna ask you to do something after that. Father God, I ask you to bless every one of these moms and these women, these strong women in this room and online as well and in the drive-in, Lord, that you recognize them and that others will recognize Christ in them as well. And that whatever season they are in, Lord, that, that you are with them and that if they need to, to come to you about some accusations that they've been holding on to, Lord, that you will release them from that, that they will feel more free, that the greatest gift that they can have today is the freedom that we have from you claiming our sins to the cross. We don't need to hold on to those any longer, Lord. I thank you for all of these things in your name. Amen. I'm going to ask you to join me in being the light together, that if you'll one by just come up to light candles in this box as we light this room up and that this is the start of being the light for us and this next generation while this last song plays but don't leave after that because pastor Haley and I have to come up at the end to tell you a surprise You are matchless in grace and mercy. There is nowhere we can hide from your love. You are steadfast, never failing. You are faithful. All creation is in awe of who you are. We sing. Come against no one can stand between us. God with us, God for us. Nothing can come against no one can stand between us.
what a beautiful sight to stand together, to stand firm in our faith. I just encourage all of you to believe in yourself, have confidence in your faith, and to pass that on to our next generation. And I am honored and excited to be up here with my daughter and Pastor Haley and mom to be. But she's got some fun news for us. Well, thank you, everybody. One thing I know that you and Pastor Dan have the same, you both love to make everybody cry. So we could count on that being consistent. Well, I want to say happy Mother's Day to all of you. And before we get into the gift that we have for the moms, I want to talk about something that I, as a high school pastor specifically, am so excited about. And that is something we have coming up May 23rd called our Safe Home Sunday Luncheon. If you are a parent, maybe a grandparent, or you have any kids or students underneath you that look up to you, third grade all the way up, we have this luncheon specifically for you, covering things like technology, what are they looking at on their phones, what is this epidemic of vaping, what is going on in my student's world. And if any other questions that you might have, we're most likely going to be talking about that with some leaders and the pastors. And this is a great way for us to partner together to help the next generation. And so I encourage you to look into that. You can register online. Again, that's May 23rd, so in two weeks. And we are so excited for there that. There is child care for a small fee as well. So even better. No, no excuses. excuses. Yeah. So like she mentioned in the beginning, it's a Stacy party. It wouldn't be a Stacy party without a little gift for the moms. So on your way out, you will find one of these adorable pineapple boxes. And inside is a compact mirror, and I thought it was so fitting as she talked about being in the image of God that when you open that, again, while you're checking your makeup, we know that's what we're doing, making sure we have nothing in our teeth. Remind yourself you were made in the image of God. So happy Mother's Day. We were so happy you joined us. And take your time getting the kids today. In fact, I don't know what time the Twisted Lime opens down there, but go for brunch and come back and pick up your kids. They're fine. Have a fantastic day. We are so happy to have you joining us on The Post Show. Whether you are a mom or you are a mom figure to someone, we appreciate you and we are so glad you're here. I'm Crystal DeHunt. You'll see me online every Sunday in the chat. And this is Liz Webb. She is our bridge pastor. So that is fourth and fifth grade. Yes. So tell me, Liz, you're a mom. Yes. Tell me about your kids. Um, I have two kids. Owen is 14 and Olivia is 17. Wow. Yes. And I have two boys, yes. 20 and 17, one off to college. You've got one about ready to go off to college. Yes. She's graduating this year. So tell me about your proudest mom moment, so to speak. Well, right now, my proudest mom moment is that we moved here to Washington about a year and a half ago. And Olivia survived almost two years of online school and she's graduating this year. So I am so proud of all of her hard work. Um, definitely was not easy throwing her into a new school and then going and online. And then going online. Yeah, that is a huge accomplishment. Yes, what about you? Well, you know, I am just super proud of both of my boys. I'm proud of what they do. I'm proud of their choices. I am so proud of them and everything, especially the older one, only because he's off on his own and really becoming his own person. Oh, yeah. It's so fun to see. But the biggest thing that I am proud of is their friends. Their friends come to me for mom advice. They're happy even now, even though Reese doesn't live there anymore, his friends are happy to just open the door and walk in my house, sit down, grab a bag of chips and be like, hey mom, I got this, let's talk. And oh, I just, awesome. I love that sense of community of kind of being all encompassing. Yeah, so you're a mother figure to them. It's like a bonus mom. Oh, bonus mom. I love that. And you know what? Cause I don't want to leave anybody out. Their moms, these boys that I'm talking about, my sons would do the same thing in their house. They, it, we just have a great oh, mom community, that is wonderful. which is really good. So shout out to you other moms <laughs> out there. Um, we have some great stuff. I want to make sure you guys know about this. You are probably, if you're still watching, you are our online audience. Do you know we have online services for your kids? Where can they find that? 
Yes, um, we post online services every Sunday morning on our YouTube channel. All you have to do on YouTube is search Gold Creek Kids. But we also have on goldcreek.org, when you scroll down, you'll see our Gold Creek Kids logo. And we have a link to the YouTube channel. We've got a link to our Facebook page, as well as a link so you can print out activity packets for your kids that go along with our Sunday service. So we have so many things to keep your kids connected with us if you are viewing exclusively online right now. And you can do that anytime during the week. It doesn't have to be on Sunday. And if you're gathering together, you can use that as your kids program while you guys watch the adult service. Yes. Yeah. We've got some other things coming up to keep kids safe. Talk about that. We do. On May 23rd at noon, we are doing something that we're calling Safe Home Sunday. We are going to be talking about internet and phone safety, going over the new apps, the different terminology that kids are using nowadays, the different websites and how to protect your kids. Yes, it does. We're also going to be talking about vaping. Um, I know, I didn't even know what that stuff looked like until I started doing some research into it. And some of you guys might be surprised and it might be in your house and you may not know it. Yes. So we're going to be going over safety tips about that as well as just how to establish a firm foundation in faith with your kids. That's awesome. So that is when? That is May 23rd, Sunday at noon. And they can, you guys can go on goldcreek.org scroll down to the events section and you can register there or you can come even if you don't register but we'd love to know that you are coming thank you so much for watching today happy mother's day to those of you that are moms or mom figures we will see you next week happy mother's day you guys we are so